There we go. Boy, what y'all think about that new lid right there? Look at the thing. Uh, y'all like that? Mm, y'all can't even have this one. This one was made just for me right here, boys. Fishing Freak Gomez dropping the first comment. And everybody else, let me know who's here. Give a few minutes for people to get gathered up and get this thing off and running. Kevin Jones is here. South Texas Bassin is here. We appreciate all you guys. The Bass Colonel, y'all like that hat? Hey, that's a one of one right there. My boy Hayden down there at Six Cents Lure, Six Cents Fishing. He knew. He knows I like that multicam. He knows I like that. So look, he put me a little July Fourth American flag patch together with my my multicam pattern. And uh, let me know if y'all like that. If y'all like that, I'll get him to put some on the website so y'all can buy them. What up, Cole Lakely, Lane Seaman, Don Pearson? Random skills. That's how. That's my fishing game right there. Random skills. Your name is named after my fishing game. Just random. What a Brett Ren. Mojo. Mojo, I seen you trying to you trying to bite on my style a little bit, boy. Growing your little beard out like you're grown folks or something. Yeah, yeah. So if y'all are digging the hat and y'all want to order one, let me know in the comments tonight. And uh, if we get enough response, we will get six cents fishing to put the old multicam. July 4th flavor on the website. Am I running Ultrax? I do not have an Ultrax. Willie Allen, how you doing, sir? Seabock. What's up, buddy? The, the Army? Who said the Army? The Army? Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Well. I've got some great army jokes, but none of them are approved for the air. Sean Andre, what's up, Maldonado? Kevin Jones, it's nice to meet you too, buddy. Brett Wren, you missed last week. Well, Brett Wren, you're fired, buddy. You're out of here. Just kidding, brother. Don Pearson is a tick. Okay, Don Pearson is a tick. I think you mean stick is in the guy can fish. Y'all want to talk about some baits because I'm just rambling. It is fun talking to you guys, though. I like just having conversations on here with y'all. That's kind of cool. But let's talk about some top five baits because I think that's probably what you're here for. It's getting a little tough. Getting a little tough out there. It's not as easy to catch them. We're getting that hot summertime. But, hey, we're still catching good fish. Had a really good day the other day. And we caught a big one right off the bat this morning. So uh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. Um... Go ahead and give you the juice right here, first thing in the morning. We're fishing that grass, and sometimes all day, honestly. The old hollow belly's still kicking it, boys. That one's still running good for us. Light hit's my favorite color right there. My little flashy swimmer. Always like that around grass. That is my swim bait rig. That's our number one bait for this week. And second is going to be my other favorite bait that I have here every single week because it's just that good and this one it's fun because this is probably the same one this might be the same exact bait I showed y'all last week as y'all can see it's been getting a little <laughs> it's, get, it's beginning to get broke in you might say folks it's beginning to get a little use on her you know what I'm saying we're starting to wear out a little bit the old chatterbait with the impact shad that's going to be our number two bait this week um that's honestly, guys, up shallow. That's like the only two things I'm doing up shallow. Like, those are my two deals. Well, I'm throwing the grass spoon a little bit. That's going to be our number three bait, actually. I'll go ahead and show you guys the grass spoon. Not the most of you hadn't already seen it, but in case there's somebody new here tonight. Little miniature version of a flutter spoon. I mean, it's not small, small, but it's smaller than your big flutter spoons. Got a single J hook on the back right there. And we, we actually throw that into the grass, rip it out, let it fall down the creek channel. Now, one of the reasons this is here is because I, I throw this out deep as well. It takes a little longer to get down there than some of the big spoons, but I can take this bait, rip it out of grass, catch fish there, take it out deep, throw it out there on the deep spots and still catch fish on it the same way. So um, it's just, you know, I like it because I can kind of throw it in all situations and it gives me that flutter spoon presentation. All right, let's get to a couple of deep baits. A couple of deep baits. There's one right here that is showing sure up a good one. Uh, probably been the most consistent bait on four car, though we didn't catch one today. 
Uh, probably the most consistent bait on fork here lately. The old mag trick worm. And this awesome, and I mean awesome, six cents, divine shaky head, five eighths out, big seven out hook. That's a big old Lake Fork deep water shaky head and six cents lures, like they do everything else. Um, just makes a top notch product. This this shaky head is awesome. Phenomenal big shaky head right here. Really love it. Caught a lot of fish on it this year. I don't know what color that is. It's red and it's got green and blue sparklies. I don't, that's not red bug and that's not, I don't know which one that is. It's not plum, it's not red bug. It's got green and blue flake and it's red. I think if it's red and it has sparkly stuff, sparkly, you're good, right? That's it. Somebody's asking what the weight on that spoon is. I don't have any idea what the actual weight is. It's the one that works really good in grass. So if you go to Joe Spates' shop or you call Joe Spates because he doesn't have a website, uh, just ask for the grass spoon that Billy Lawson fishes and he'll give you that spoon. Oh, where's my last? Oh, last bait. <laughs> my sneaky bait right here. It's my sneaky bait is what I call it because it's sneaky good. And look, I didn't even know this until just the other day, but Six Cents actually makes some swing heads. The old wobble heads, whatever you want to call it. Uh, three quarter ounce wobble head, six cents divine wobble head or swing head. I'm not sure what they're calling it, but six cents lures makes it. It has divine in the name and it's awesome. And here's here's the coolest part about theirs. And I've looked for this forever, and little did I know that six cents fishing had this. But now I know, and I'm all in. This is a wobble head with a screw lock that swings free. It's so great, dude. Saves you so many baits. It allows you to put different baits on there. You might get throw a swim bait on here. I'm just saying. But we've been throwing the Biffle Bug, the traditional bait, on the Wobble Head. That is our number five bait for this week. It's been working really well as well. J.D. Atten, if I see you, buddy, good to see you in here. Mark's asking about a medium heavy or heavy rod. On that spoon, I think, because you asked about the spoon. Uh, on on the spoon, um, I'm throwing a medium heavy. I'm throwing six eleven medium heavy. I'm actually throwing a pretty light action rod. You got to have some play in your rod because with that little bitty hook and that spoon, uh, they will try to throw it, and you got to kind of let them run and play them out. And that smaller rod, and I actually use smaller line too, uh, twelve pound monofilament line, gives me some stretch and some extra shock absorption in there. Does the color of the head matter on the wobble head? Um, I don't know. We caught fish on the green one today, and before that I was throwing the black one, and I, I really, I don't think so. I, I don't think the color on the head really matters. <laughs> Am I punching yet? I don't know. Um, I don't know. No, I haven't yet, but I'm really considering tying that up tonight and trying it tomorrow. Big worm on the wall. Absolutely throw a big worm on the wobble head. We've been throwing the biffle bug. Biffle bug's a bait that I really am fond of on the wobble head. Uh, but a 10 inch worm or even a big straight tail worm, uh, nothing wrong with that on the wobble head. Was that, yes, that was the evergreen jackhammer chatterbait. That was the evergreen jackhammer. What size impact shad? On the chatterbaits, I'm using a five inch impact shad. How is the missus? Mr. Brett Bennett, thank you for asking. The missus is doing wonderful. Uh, she has somehow managed to put up with me and not kick me out of the house yet, so that's great. But she's doing great. She's actually out in the backyard playing with the boys right now. So. Chris Jones from old Wacko Waco right there. Swim jig, whoop, 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 whoop. lost that, here we go. Swim jig or chatterbait? Clear water, sunny, hot days. Um, man, I don't know. They just tend to, it depends on if they want that vibration or not. You know, like that could be, 
that could go either way. I, I mean, just you just got to try both and let the fish kind of tell you on that one. S bought some of those Smash Tech hollow bodies off Tackle Warehouse. <laughs> FYI, Gunnersville bass eat them up. I knew they would, man. Gunnersville's a good swim bait lake. And those hollow bellies, they're, they're so awesome. And you're very welcome, by the way. I am tired. <laughs> I've had a lot of long days. This is the end of a long week. On the water again tomorrow, and then I got Saturday off the water. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> Somebody said that I look tired after a long hot day. I sound tired. I am tired. Uh, silent or rattling on deep cranks? Silent for me on Lake Fork, especially. If I get hung in a tree, are you going to do a cannonball off the side of the skeeter and retrieve my bass? Uh, I don't know that I'm going to do a cannonball because Lake Fork is full of stumps. But if you got a good one and it's hung in a tree, yeah, I'll, I'll go fetch it. <laughs> I'll take my phone out of my pocket and get after it, buddy. And Matt Scotch, I know what you're referring to. I, I, I do. I know what you're referring to. But I, I, when I go get your bass, I promise I won't leave my sunglasses on and my hat on. And you know what I'm saying, though. Do I ever use scent on the biffle buck? I, I, I don't. I mean, sometimes I will spray a little bit of garlic on stuff. I haven't here. I, lately, I've kind of gotten away from that habit. I used to do it a lot. Should the cooler weather early next week be better for shallow water? Yeah, it should improve the shallow water bite. I believe so. Uh, Ethan, I appreciate you booking the trip, the two trips today, and I look forward to meeting you as well, buddy. Thanks for watching tonight, too. Uh, you guys are busting at all the questions. I'm having a hard time keeping up. It's awesome. Hang on. I'm trying to catch up to you. Uh, Whopper plopper still getting bit. I have not been getting much of a topwater bite at all, guys. It's been really weird. Not even a frog. It's been kind of strange. What lipper's crank do I recommend for fishing the grass? I like the Quake 70 and the Quake 70 Thud. Thud is a one knocker, Quake 70 is traditional with BBs. I, I love the Quake series of lipless crankbaits from Six Inch Fishing. Uh, dang near won the guide tournament, the guides tournament amongst all the guides on Lake Fork this winter. I'm a big fan of that Quake series of lipless crankbaits. What lake fish is closest to Fork in the Austin area? Uh, I don't know. You have to ask somebody from Austin. I don't really know. When should I place my order for guiding the graph to have the most up-to-date waypoints? Um, so the way that works is there's a new version that comes out every two months. So on July 1st, there'll be a brand new chip that's available for July and August. On September 1st, there'll be a brand new chip that's available for September and October. So whatever two-month period you're coming in, the first of the first month of that two month period is when you want to order. What about in the winter, David? What would, I don't know the rest of that question. What about in the winter? But ask me again, please, or, or clarify it for me. <laughs> Matt Scotch, I got you, buddy. Am I still experiencing a shad spawn down there? Nope, nope. It's over for the year for me. I, I haven't seen any more evidence of shad spawn. That's gone. Would I rather fish with the tactical bassin guys or, or Mikey Balls? I like both of them. I've liked tactical bassin longer. They're a little bit more along the lines of what I do, I believe. I haven't watched very much of Mikey Balls. I used to watch tactical bassin all the time. Definitely would love to fish with Matt and Tim, either one of them. Uh, that would probably be my pick there. No offense to Mikey Balls. I just haven't watched enough of his stuff. I don't really know exactly what he's all about. Which six cents crate bait? Am I using out deep right now? Well, if I'm fishing out deep, uh, you know, I'm going to be using the big boy. I'm going to go to this Cloud 9 Series C25. How far out am I booked up? I have, I have some dates in July. I have just a couple dates left. The first half of July and the second half of July is relatively open. Scattered dates throughout the second half of July. Uh, I do have July 2nd and 6th available. Are the six cents Lux rods made in America? No. Hey, let me go ahead. There is no such thing as a rod made in America. Maybe Castaway. Like, there's not 
all the blanks for the rods, they all come from China. There's rods that are assembled in America. There's no such thing as a rod made in America. The blanks all come from the same factories, two or three factories in China. That's the same thing with six cents. Theirs come from China just like everybody else's. What about Chase and Bass? What about him? I actually ate lunch with him today, man. Chase, Chase is, a, is a cool dude, man. I like, I like Chase a lot. Uh, we talk every once in a while. Um, he's a good guy. He's a darn good fisherman, too. Um, yeah, we had lunch together today. Chase is a good dude. Do I have any future plans with the Guggen Squad? I mean, I'm sure I'll do some more videos with them. They like fishing with me, so I like fishing with them. I'm sure we'll do some more. Uh, Jeff Partridge, can you get caught up on all the guy in the graph, graph chips? No, we don't do any back orders for the old files from the months previous. Those files don't even exist anymore. And the point of that is when next January, February, next March, April come around, it'll be a new chip with different stuff on it. There'll be new spots, new information uh, based on what's going on that year. How come when a bass is bleeding badly, you pour Sprite? With citric acid down its mouth, uh, it clots. It clots the blood. It makes it stop bleeding. I don't know what. I'm not like real smart <laughs> scientifically um, or any other way really, but uh, it does clot the blood and make it stop bleeding. Keep getting really soft bites. Is that a time of year thing, or do I throw something different to get a better bite? That is definitely not a time of year thing. The summertime, they bite pretty dang aggressively quite a bit bucket list of water to fish top three top three lakes that I want to fish um bass fishing or can I go multi-species on you guys I'll do both bass because I like that's a good question by the way that's probably that's question of the night right there I like that Higher end Falcons are made in the USA. No, they're not. The blanks come from China. They're assembled in the USA. The blanks are from China, I promise you. Um, top three bass fisheries that I want to fish that I haven't fished yet. Uh, California Delta, Okeechobee, and Gunnersville. Grass, grass, and grass. <laughs> Imagine that with me, right? Top three fishing experiences, peacock bass in the Amazon, uh, tarpon, and one hand-lined Goliath grouper. Just one. That's all I want. South Texas bass, and I hear you, bro. But, you know, it is what it is, man. Them boys are good. They're good for what, you know, they're awesome guys. And they do their thing, and they do it better than anybody. Uh. Coosa River, man, look, if I'm talking about top three fisheries, bro, look, I mean, I, I hear you on the spotted bass, but I'll, if I'm going to bass fish somewhere, you got to remember I fish Lake Fork, like I'm going somewhere that I still got a good chance of a 10-pounder. That's just my deal, man. Y'all got some 10-pound spotted bass over there in the Coosa River? I don't know. Never saw pics of the, <laughs> this is funny, never saw pics of the teen out of your boat. Have Has it been posted yet? Oh, it was posted. It was posted about lunchtime that day. I edited the original post with the new picture in there. Here's the deal. We did catch a teener this week, boys. I mean, we caught a giant. I think it was Monday morning, first thing. Big old giant teener-sized fish. Not bass. Fish. We caught probably like a 15-pound drum. <laughs> it was a little joke. I teased everybody and said I had a teener in the boat. And then about three hours later, I posted a picture of a giant drum. So, all in good fun. Uh, about to put some Smash Tech and Six Cents products to work on El Salto. Boy, you're going to have fun. Top three collaborations, YouTubers and pros? That's another good question. Um, as far as like, so that's just like a guy I want to fish with for a day. Uh, pros would be Greg Hackney, number one. Like, and there's not a close second. Hackney's my guy. I'm I got a little bit of a man crush on the hack attack. Uh, swindle. Definitely swindle. And I 
That's a tough one. Um, you know what, Kelly Jordan, just because he's my Lake Fork hero, man. He's, he's my Lake Fork hero, Kelly Jordan, um, for sure. YouTubers, here's the thing about YouTubers, guys. Guys that make YouTube content don't get to watch it that much. I don't even know. Like, that wouldn't be a fair answer for me because I don't know most of these guys. Um, if it's top three that I haven't already done, like I've already finished with John B. and Lunkers TV and One Rob, One Reel back in the day and Lake Fork Guy and Flair, like all those guys. I finished with all those guys. So uh, if it's ones that I haven't done, Tactical Bass is probably the number one for me. Um, and then I just don't know because there's so many YouTube guys I don't know. It's hard for me to say who I would or wouldn't want to fish with. I just don't know the rest of those guys very well. Sorry, I know, it's not a, a good answer, but it's the truth. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to catch up to the questions. Y'all are, y'all are dropping them in so fast, can't keep up. Okay, I'm just going to go from top. Wesley Strader? Yeah, he's good. <laughs> he's good. Uh, can you use lake tips to fish ponds? Well, you have to use, yes, the technique tips and stuff like that, absolutely, you can use those on ponds. As far as locating the bass, a bass is a bass, and he will act the same in the same conditions. So if your pond has similar situations to some of the conditions we're describing at the lake, then the bass should theoretically be doing the same type of things. But there's so many conditions under the water that we fail to take into account. What type of bait? What size of bait? Water tip? Uh, you know, structure contours. Like, there's just so many things that can be different. Is there punchable grass on Fort? Yes, there is. Uh, Florida Lake water tip is 89. Many fish are suspended, and you're struggling to catch them. What suggestions can you give me? On a Florida lake, that's probably going to be a little bit of a bowl, not much structure. So those fish have to relate to the vegetation. The vegetation is their structure. Uh, I, I'll, I would do a lot of punching, and I would do a lot of finesse fishing on the edges. Uh, you know, if you see signs of them chasing bait, then I'm going to go to swim baits. Um, if they're suspended out in the middle and you don't have much vegetation to fish, buddy, you're in for a tough deal. I mean, a flutter spoon and Alabama rig probably going to be your best bet, but you're in a tough situation if that's your case would I be open to a big bass bag viewer what hold on would I be would I be open to a big bass bag viewer open challenge for a vid I big bass bag viewer open challenge I, I don't really know exactly what that is have I fished Nakanish? I have not fished Nakanish. Um, but it's great from what I hear, what I've seen. Is a sea rig getting bites? Yeah, sea rig's getting bites. Um, what rod do I have it set up on? I'm using the eight foot heavy with a moderate fast tip for my Carolina rig. It does get some bites, but that shaky head and that biffle bug uh, wobble head has been the deal for me here lately. Those have been getting more bites. Science. Science is not my friend. Come back, Shane. Let's go. Get it back going, folks. Giveaways. Uh, well, I know I haven't done one in a while. I've been really busy. We will do some more of those soon. I've actually got one that was given away a long time ago that our schedules never worked out, and that is coming up uh, fishing with him the first, second week of July. So let me get that one done, and then we will do another one. I will try to fish with one of you guys in August or September. Uh, we'll probably give that one away mid to late June. We will do sub trip giveaways where you guys get to come fish with me for a day, and we make a video together. Spy bait, yep, yeah, that's a good idea on those suspended bass. That spy bait is awesome. Willie Allen, pay attention to that comment. Spy bait is great for suspended bass in the summertime. Uh, caught the biggest bass ever 
in a local, highly pressured pond today on a biffle bug. Needless to say, you love that bait right now. Yeah, you, you'll be committed to it for life now, brother. <laughs> If a viewer challenges you to a bass off heaviest bag limit for a video, yeah, I'm in on that. Yeah, the, the view, yeah, I'm I'm down on that. It's just a scheduling factor, man. My schedule is crazy, guys. It, it's insane. If some of you some of you guys that know me really well and know what my schedule is, but it's tough to squeeze in. But I am definitely down for a big bag challenge versus a viewer. I'm in. I love it. Where are we gonna fish? Are we fishing the same pond, same lake? Water temps on fork, uh, mid to high 80s. How did the filming go at the Skeeter Tournament? It went great. We uh, got a good video. Uh, should be up next week. Got some good interviews. We actually had some Guide in the Graph customers. that uh, We have one. I was only there. Listen, this is great now. I was there for one of the hourly weigh-ins where I actually sat through the hourly weigh-in, watched all the people. Hey, they, had, they paid 10 places. Four of the checks were Guide in the Graph customers that were using that map ship including the guy that won that hour it works y'all it's for real it ain't no it ain't no gimmick it ain't no joke i know you guys all know that but for those out there that might not believe in it it's for real six cent swim jig been getting it done awesome main lake here is around 87 degrees water coming from the upper dam runs around 65 degrees have you ever heard of bass will run into that cold water in the summer water coming from the upper dam yeah if there's colder water they're going to go to it like no doubt they're going to go to it for sure um mox nicks nate we appreciate that i'm assuming you ordered you ordered the chip that's awesome buddy thank you very much we should start trying to wrap this up because we're probably going to lose signal again here in a minute. Weightless impact shad or a jerk bait? Oh, okay, that's you're talking to Willie Allen. Good deal, good deal. <laughs> See, I told y'all. <laughs> I told y'all we should have wrapped it up. <laughs> oh, man. The chips cost $50. The chips are $50 retail. Come on, signal. Do your thing. Somebody let me know if I'm back. I think I'm back. I just don't know. Okay, so the guy that grabbed map chips are fifty dollars retail. Somebody asked about that. When fishing shallow lakes, do you look for running creeks at the backs of creeks that's closed in the summer? Yeah, if they have them, if they have water, most places don't have a lot of water running in in the summertime. But if it exists, it's great. Current, all that helps provide oxygen, cool the water down. It's wonderful. Definitely look for that if you have it. Um, oh, thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. Let me know. How hard is it to start fishing lakes is all you've ever fished is ponds. It's not hard to catch them. It's just hard to find them if you're not used to it. Uh, but do it. It'll make you a better fisherman. Uh, definitely do it. That's what we're all in for, man. It's part of the challenge. It's part of the sport. Get on that big water. Figure them out. It's so rewarding when you do. Um, it will be a challenge. Prepare yourself. It's going to be a challenge. Um, how long will somebody's asking about the seminars? How long it'll be before we need a bigger space? We need a bigger space right now, um, to be honest with you. But the, and I need a space that has Wi-Fi so I can live stream the seminars so we can get questions from you guys that are not available to be present. Um, but right now, that's the best situation we have. And I love Lake Fort Marina. They've been so accommodating, and taking such good care of us. It's been phenomenal. Can you use the Lake Fort God promo code ten percent off the guide in the crowd? <laughs> Oh, man, that thing's cheap. Look, it's less than $2 a spot, bro. It's really cheap. Really, it should cost more than it does. Will I be posting a video from Skeeter Owners Tournament? Yes, I went and filmed footage at Skeeter Owners Tournament. That video will be up next week. Woody Turner, thank you very much. We appreciate you watching. Thank you for saying that. I'm going to go ahead and get off here because the signal is going to cut out any minute again, and I don't want to go through that whole process again. And I know you guys don't either. Hey, we appreciate you guys watching so much. Uh, we've got some good videos coming up. I was out with uh, Mr. Hayden from Six Edge Fishing yesterday. A video from that coming next week. We've got Skeeter Owners Tournament. i got a lot of client footage that I'm way, way, way behind on. I need to get some more customer catch videos. So we're going to keep knocking out as many videos as, 
as many of these videos as my schedule will allow. I appreciate you guys being patient with me and understanding that I don't have the time to put out all the videos like some of the full-time YouTubers do, but I want to try to make sure you guys are getting the quality content, and I will always, every single week, bring you instructional information to help you the very best I can because that's what we're about. Hey, helping each other catch more fish and loving our fellow man. That's just what we do right here on your Lake Fort Guide. Appreciate you guys so much. For you guys that are booking trips with me, can't wait to see all y'all and meet all y'all. We're going to get after them, have a good time, and we'll see you next time right here on your Lake Fort Guide.